What up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So I've been on like a fantasy kick lately, as clearly demonstrated by my wizard hat tutorial and my assassin's cloak. So I figured, let's just keep this train a rolling. To that end, I've decided to make one of those long stemmed wizard pipes, you know, like Gandalf uses, because that is the image that goes in my head when I think of a wizard. Like you get the hat, you get a long stem pipe as you reach from a tome of magic. I should make a tome of magic next. Now I will be creating this out of two separate pieces of wood, one for the bowl and one for the stem, which means we are gonna be leveling up our woodworking skills. Steps, of course, if you wanna follow along, will be in the description below, and if you can like and subscribe, it does my channel a lot of good. All right, I'll stop wasting your time and level up this skill, planning. So for this build, I bought this beautiful piece of olive wood for the bowl, and this piece of walnut here for the stem. I'm hoping that the color combination is gonna look really cool together with the lighter bowl and the darker stem, but we'll see. First things first though, I have to measure and draw out my design. I'm gonna start by using my piece of wood here as a template so that I know exactly how much material to work with. Then I'm giving myself one inch allowance for the stem and one and a half for the bowl. Now I'm gonna cut this two inch space in half to denote where my stem is gonna go then come down at a 45 degree angle. Finally, I draw in the stem. My stem's my gonna be a half inch, so I mark it accordingly and draw my lines. I'm also gonna draw in this little air passage here so I know where it lands in the bowl. I also draw in the stem of the pipe to see how it'll all look together, ensuring that I don't go over my half inch requirement. Then I hone in all of the little details, making sure it's exactly how I want it. Once I have the general design all laid out, I start cutting out the template. Then I disconnect the stem from the bowl just because I'm gonna mill the pieces separately and then put them together after the fact. All right, now that we did that, it's time for making the stem. For the sake of efficiency, I'm gonna start with the stem first. This is because I have to glue two pieces together and leave them to dry for a long period of time. So while that glue dries, I'm gonna work on the bowl. Look at how efficient I'm being. It's like a first time for everything. Okay, first we need to cut a mold to form like a clamp for the shape of the stem we want. To do this, I took a piece of pine I had laying around and drew in the shape of the stem. Then I cut along my line with a jigsaw. So once we glue up the two pieces of our stem, we can use this as a clamp and clamp it into place so it takes on this shape. Once the glue dries and we release it from the clamp, it should maintain that shape. So here's the plan. I need to cut this piece of walnut in half. Then on each half, I need to put a little groove down the center of it and then glue them together. By doing that, I'll have made a little wooden straw through which to smoke. So as I mentioned in previous videos, I don't have a table saw, so I'm gonna use my jigsaw to cut this thing in half. To do this, I just mark a center line, secure the piece in place, and then carefully cut through with my jigsaw. Now you notice here I put a piece of pine underneath it. That's just to stop the board from juddering around. I don't want it to break while I'm cutting it. Now that my one board has become two, I find and mark the center of each. Then I go through with my trusty Dremel and make that mark into a groove. This doesn't have to be a crazy deep groove. I did maybe about an eighth of an inch on both sides. So when you put it together, you have about a quarter of an inch hole going all the way through. Now I'm gonna use the very back end of this long drill bit here as kind of a chisel to clean up my groove. All right, at this point where I have them together like this, I can see all the way through to the other side. So I think this is ready to be glued up. For this glue up, I've decided to use type on two wood glue. To help the glue stick, I roughed up both sides with 60 grit sandpaper. Apply a good amount of glue to both sides and make sure you evenly spread it. Also, keep the groove you made clear of any glue. It would kind of defeat the purpose if it was all gummed up with glue. You won't be able to blow any of that sweet, sweet smoke through. I don't, I'm not a smoker, I don't know. I imagine that would be negative though, you know, defeat the purpose of a pipe. To make sure this stays clear, lay a piece of string or cordage down into the groove. Then sandwich the two pieces together. Now carefully set down your glue up in between the pieces of pine we cut earlier. Make sure you go really slowly. You wanna give the wood fibers some time to get into that position. If you just kind of go for it, you run the risk of snapping it. Once you've got it locked into place, this is where our string comes in handy. Use it to clear any of the glue that had seeped out while you were sandwiching the two pieces together. Now put it somewhere safe and warm to dry. I'm gonna follow Typon's instructions here and leave it alone for 24 hours before stressing the joint. So I'm afraid that if I try to rush that process, the amount of tension those are under are gonna make that, that seam pop apart. Patience is a virtue. Besides, we have plenty of stuff to do on the bowl part. Speaking of which, making the bowl. Time to trace our shape onto a block of olive wood so we know what to cut out. Start by investigating your piece of wood and finding the grain that you like the most. Having done that, I use my template to mark out exactly where I want the pipe to be. 
I also make sure to transpose it onto the front side so I know exactly what the width of the piece is gonna be. Using a square, I continue all of my lines up through the top so I can see what I'm gonna be chopping off with my chop saw. Then I get to cutting. So my goal here is to remove as much material as possible with the chop saw. If you have a bandsaw, I think that would work better. I just don't. So I'm gonna chop as much off as I can with the chop saw so I don't have to remove the rest of it by hand. As you can see, I was able to get a good amount of material removed. I'll use some hand saws to roughly cut out the rest. This doesn't have to be perfect as I'm gonna end up shaping the rest of it with my belt sander. With my pipe's rough shape in place, I mark out the center of my bowl and also the center of where my draft hole will be. That's just the hole that leads all the way through the stem of the pipe. At this point, I also decided to shape in the size of the stem coming out, only because I'm going to be drilling a hole through there and I wanna know exactly where that should lie in relation to everything else. Speaking of which, I measure a 1 8 inch drill bit up against the piece to see exactly how far in I want it to go. Then I very carefully drill into the center point that I made to that depth. This is a point where if you have a drill press, you definitely want to use it. I was very slowly able to pull it off. It, it is a totally doable thing. Just be really careful with it. All right, now I want to drill a guide hole down into my bowl. But here's the caveat. I want the hole to just meet that first hole that I made. So I again use the drill bit and the piece as a measurement and mark the required depth with a piece of tape. Then again, I carefully center my drill bit and drill to the required depth. To drill out the actual bowl itself, I got this round nose router bit. The reason being, if you use just a spade bit, you're going to end up with a flat bottom to the bowl. What will happen there is all of your tobacco will get lodged into the hard corner that's formed between the wall and the floor. What you want instead is a little basin so that everything burns evenly all the way down to the bottom. Thank you, plethora of pipe maker forums on the interwebs. Very helpful. Having secured the piece, I carefully drilled down to my required depth. Keep checking every once in a while to make sure you can see the little hole that you made. Once you can just see it, you're done, stop. It's hard to make out in this footage here, but there it is right there. And as you can see, air can pass freely through all holes. This is again another portion where having a drill press would be awesome, because coming down exactly center would be a little tricky by hand. All right, with all that out of the way, it's time for fit and finish. So with the bowl roughly in shape, it's time to check on the glue up of our stem. Carefully releasing it from its form, I am pleasantly surprised to see how well it maintained its shape. And by putting these two pieces side by side and squinting a little bit, you can kind of start to see how this is gonna look once it's all put together. All right, so you stick a pipe bowl and the stem together using a mortise and tenon. For my tenon, I'm gonna be using this leftover piece of quarter inch oak dowel from my arrow project. Using a 3.30 seconds drill bit, I carefully drill a hole into the center of my dowel. Now, slowly increasing in drill bit size, I carefully drill in my mortise in both the stem and the bowl. Then I cut my tendon to size and stick it into place. At this point, check that out. That is starting to look like a pipe. And also check this out, ready? Wood shavings in there. Ah, air flows easily all the way through. But I actually think at this point, it technically is a pipe. I think you could pack this and actually just smoke out of it if you wanted to. It is super ugly at this point though, but that's okay. Now that I know it's functional um, and it's shaped correctly, all I have to do is sand it into shape. So um, this is actually gonna be the fun part now. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper on my belt sander here to remove any unwanted material and start to rough shape in exactly how I want the piece to look. Once I'm happy with the rough shape here, I move on to hand sanding it with various grits of sandpaper. Starting with 100 grit and ending with 2000 grit. And once I know the shape is gonna work, I glue the tenon into the stem as well. So just using all these grits of sandpaper has already made the piece really nice looking and shiny without any finish. That being said, I do wanna protect it. So I'm gonna be adding this butcher block conditioner. So this is food safe. It contains mineral oils, which will help protect it from moisture. It also contains beeswax and carno carnauba wax. I just know it's a wax that was recommended in all the pipe makers forums for sealing the pipe. And once I rub it in, look at that grain. Damn, that's pretty. Like I thought it was pretty before, but as soon as the oil got into that grain, everything turned really gorgeous. That's so pretty. I'm not gonna lie, at first I was thinking about carving like runes into here and whatnot, but I like this grain so much, I think I'm just gonna leave it, I think I'm just gonna leave it like this. I'm very happy with that. And the walnut here, it looks really kind of classy. It's like a, a rich walnut with the smell of tobacco smoke, like a Victorian gentleman's study. Now, I am not a smoker, but I do pride myself on having everything on the show be functional. To that end, I bought some tobacco. 
take this bad boy on its maiden voyage. That is a working pipe. <laughs> Check that out. If any kids are watching, I guess don't smoke. You should know that by now. It's not good for you. Oh, and I've made a discovery. So as I'm sure all you subscribers remember, I made this dope wizard's hat fairly recently. But I have a theory as to why a wizard hat is shaped as such. It's because wizards be blazing all the time. It'd be funny if they don't actually know magic. They're just so high all the time. They think they're doing amazing things. It's that halfling's weed Gandalf likes so much. But yeah, that aside, this is a really cool project. But I'm not the only one of us who's been doing cool projects. Check out some of these pieces you talented skill monkeys have shared with me on the Discord. I am continually impressed with how talented this community is. If you have a project you've been working on and you want to see here, join the Discord community. The link is in the description and share it with us. I'd really like to see what you're working on. And if there's any skills or project you want to see me cover, leave it in the comments section and I will add it to the list. All right, I should get going. I have to start reading my incantations or checking my Instagram account. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you.